Hey, what's up, Red Stars? It's Rox, and I'm coming to you today with a little something special. So, it's Wednesday, and I didn't really have a video to do. I know I could do Rox Ecology, but for some reason, I just can't bring myself to do it, you guys. I am so sorry for the people that wrote in. I still have your letters. <laughs> I probably will be inspired to do it one day, but I'm sorry. Y'all know that's not like me. But anyway, I didn't have anything else to do. I'm not hungry. I ate breakfast. My leg is still killing me, so there is no reason to go to the mall and walk around. I was just sitting at my desk, and I was just like, well, you know what? I feel like I have a story to tell. <laughs> Would you like to hear it? Then here it goes. This is going to be a story about this one time that I got dumped in front of the entire church. So let's get to it. So you guys, back in 1990 through like 1994, I was very, 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 very active in my church. You guys could probably tell from all these inspirational and fantabulous <laughs> gospel renditions that I give you guys on Sunday that I used to sing in the choir. And I loved to sing in the choir. In the church that I went to, the choir was really phenomenal because... It was a young group. We had some very talented musicians. And um, we all were like one big happy family. So I don't know if I've told you guys before, but I was a virgin until I was around 22 years old. It wasn't by any type of conviction or because I felt like, um, you know, God was going to punish me if I did. And it wasn't for lack of trying because let me tell you, when I was in high school, you guys, I was very, very thin and very, very, I mean, I knew a lot of people. And I hung out with all the folks that everybody knew and all of that. But the guys didn't like me because I was very skinny and, you know, I was just the one that everybody was cool with. Okay. They all wanted to talk to my friends. So, you know, guys would befriend me and then ask me for my friend's fucking phone number. Anyway, so I didn't really have boyfriends in high school. When I got into the 12th grade, it was imperative. It was so important to me for whatever reason that I get a boyfriend, fall in love, and have sex with them because by the time I went to the prom, I wanted to be able to do what all my other friends was doing, which was going to the prom, the after prom, going to the hotel, and you know, getting busy and everything. But I knew in my mind that I didn't want to have sex with just anybody. It had to be somebody that I wanted to be in love with. Okay, so that was the more important part to me, not necessarily that God was going to strike me down or anything. I just wanted to have the connection and feel that for somebody, and I never felt it. It never happened in high school, okay? I ended up going to the prom with this guy <laughs> named Lucky, who was a drug dealer, but was really, really cute, who I literally met a couple of days before the damn prom, and he was real cool, but you know, it was nothing. He wasn't getting nothing from me, because honey, I barely knew his ass, okay? So anyway, by the time... I got out of high school you know I got really confident with myself and I started to pick up a little bit of weight and um, I just felt comfortable inside of my body I felt like I was a cute girl um, I was in college I you know I was living this life I had my girlfriend and I had moved in together Debbie you guys hear me talk about Debbie all the time we moved in together so I had my own place and I was working and I went to school and I was just really feeling myself so at that point in my life it was not about trying to have sex it was just about having fun okay so I was dating and I was dating a whole bunch of people, okay? And it would be so funny because the guys would think that me saying that I was a virgin, either they would think that I was lying, okay, trying to play hard to get, or that it was a challenge to, you know, try to get me to break. And um, I could figure out what guys was thinking, but I didn't care. I like to go out on a date. I like to be treated well, you know. I love to kiss. You know, virgins love to kiss, motherfucker. We will kiss your black ass <laughs> all damn day. So, you know, it it was all good. I would go out. These guys would try different things. It would get hot. It would get heavy. But Roxanne always knew when to cut it because it still was very important to me that what? I was in love with the person. I wasn't in love with any of these guys. Then... Right around when I got 19, 20, like I said, I, I got really active in the church. So then it became a thing of, you know what? It's all right to be a virgin. It ain't no big deal, uh, you know, for me to just have to be having sex with everybody. I mean, you know, it'll happen when it happens. So anyway, 
<clears throat> back to the church. Like I said, I was very, very active in the church. I mean, we would have Bible study on Tuesdays. We would have choir rehearsal on Thursdays. We would have, you know, this young people's Bible study on Saturdays. We would be in church all day Sunday. Okay, and I loved it. After church, we would go, if we didn't have to go sing anywhere, we would go and play baseball. And, you know, we would hang out at people's houses and we would just have a good time. And it was a good feeling because we knew everybody was from the church now. But, of course, we were all young. So you can't take that out of the equation. You got young folks and people, you know, congregating always together. You know, people are starting going to have feelings for each other. And so people were dating in the church. The musicians were young. They were single. So they were seeing girls in the choir. Um, we happened to get this new musician who was a bongo player. And uh, he was just Roxanne's type. You know, he was tall. He was dark. He had this bright smile. He had a real low cut. He was just cute to me. So I had my eye on him for a little while. Finally, I was able to snag him. <laughs> And, um, you know, we started going out. And it was cool because, you know, then I felt like I was doing something special because I was seeing one of the musicians, you guys, even though he was just a bongo player. <laughs> okay, but to me at the time, I felt like that was something big. So anyway, you know, he didn't have a damn car. So I used to pick him up for church and, um, you know, take him and we would hang out and he would, you know, do all these things for me. And then, you know, I'd take him back home, whatever. I was still living at home when we first started dating, though. Or was I? Yeah, I was still living at home. But as time went on and we were seeing each other, he started to pressure me about having sex and wanting to you know know when it was that we were going to do anything and the funny thing about pressuring me it doesn't make me want to do anything it makes me very cautious and it makes me draw back and wonder why is it this big a deal even though I should have known that it was a big deal to a fucking 20 year old boy right but um you know him always bringing it up and you know it, like I said things would get hot and heavy and then he would just be like well when are we gonna do it when are we gonna do it it was never anything where he was really understanding about it so uh, we're gonna call him Marcus you guys so Marcus would be giving me grief about it and it was starting to be a problem in our relationship but we were still together one Sunday in particular we had a second service and there was an evangelist there and he was walking around and he was telling people different things because you know his big thing was supposed to be like he was this prophet he could tell people things about their lives so he um wanted everybody that were you know all the girls that were under 25 to stand up i stood up or whatever the group of people all it was a nice sized church so you know people stood up around the church and he's going around talking to different people you guys he walked directly up to me and he said you keep your virginity what you have is special is sacred the Lord has blessed you and he does not want you to just share with anybody you hold on to that because you know so he goes on and on about this right and child let me tell you I got to shout to carry on because it was like it was like this answer and there was no way that this man could know anything about what we were going through I had never talked to him you know he had never been there none of that right so I mean I was so touched okay the Lord had then came and told me personally not to have sex okay so that was sort of my answer but I already I already knew. I already knew that I wasn't going to do it unless I felt that it was the right time to do it. Okay. And nobody was going to pressure me to do that. So anyway, my boyfriend Marcus, of course, was there that day. So when we left from church, you know, we went to eat. And then when I took him home, he was like sulking the whole time. He looks over at me. And he was just like, well, I guess we're not going to never have sex now. And I was just like, why is it that, you know, you can't just <laughs> be understanding about this. Work with me on this one. You know, it's just like every time we're together now, it's about me and you fucking like, no, I guess we're not going to do it right now. So <clears throat> that was one Sunday, you guys. And then, of course, we went on like normal for a couple more Sundays. But I say, I tell you, it was getting worse and worse attention. You know, it wasn't starting to feel the same. You could tell that there was some problem there. <laughs> so you guys, this one particular Sunday, I call him, see if he wants me to pick him up. What time? He said, oh no, you don't have to pick me up. That's okay. I got a ride. I said, okay. So I go on to church, you guys. And, um, you know, it's a regular service. All the choir is sitting in the back, back here. You know, pastor gives his his uh, sermon and then he opens the doors of the church right people start coming forward you know the choir is singing and happy you know go oh, we got young folks coming forward all of that pastor goes around to everybody welcomes them he tells them you know we're gonna give them some paperwork meet them in the back they're gonna talk to him about this yada 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 and he walks up to this one girl and he was just like sister i'm so glad that you decided to join the church today he said i, I had a i had a talk with this special lady and her and her boyfriend today and uh they 
they said that they are really trying to make this union work and that, you know, they want to have God first in their lives. And, you know, she's joining this church and she's going to be here with her with her boyfriend. Uh, Marcus, stand up. <laughs> Y'all, now I used to sit right here in the front row of the soprano section. Surprisingly, I was a soprano back in the day. Marcus used to sit right in front of me. He was the bongo player, right? And directly in front of me. When the pastor turned around and said, Marcus, come on down here. Marcus just put his head down like, oh my God, shook his head like that. And I looked and I said to myself, I said, self, I know this motherfucker did not just say, Marcus, come on down here. <laughs> Marcus gets up because what else are you supposed to do? This is in front of the church. And, you know, everybody in the church, at least all the young people, definitely all the choir knew that me and Marcus was a couple, right? So Marcus goes down to the front of the church. Pastor says, yes, 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 we are so thankful. You know, Pastor gets the hooping and the hollering. He says, and uh, we also go christen their baby today. The baby was all dressed in the damn christening dress. You guys, I'll tell you what. Roxanne jumped up, grabbed her Dooney and Burke purse, and proceeded to run her ass out the side door. <laughs> and how about the entire choir, all the girls came rushing out after me. I got out into that fucking parking lot, you guys, and it was just like a damn movie. I was just like, oh my God, let me go, let me go, let me go. And everybody was like, oh, Roxanne, don't cry. It's okay, it's okay, you know. People was holding on to me, you guys. It was the fucking most dramatic shit I ever. <laughs> I was so outdone, okay? Then I was kind of in the parking lot wondering if he was ever going to come out the fucking church. I shouldn't say fucking church. Wondering if he was going to ever come out the damn church to say anything to me, okay? But it was all that going on. <laughs> you know, my brother, he was also in the choir. He said that when Pastor got the hooping and hollering and shit, he was waiting for the choir to chime in. You know, when they get real, real in the spirit, they want the choir to come in with some amens and some, you know... <laughs> He said, Pastor turned around and all the choir was gone. Like, where did everybody go? <laughs> you guys, I was heartbroken. This was my definite first heartbreak. So I drove on home because Marcus never came out of the church, obviously. And um, I just went directly to my bedroom and I just was crying and crying and crying and crying. After about an hour, my mom came into the room because my mom was at church that day. It didn't, she didn't go to my church, but it just so happened she was there that particular Sunday. So she came in the room and she just sat on the bed and you guys, my mom was not a very, <laughs> look, I'll talk about my mom. Y'all know I, my voice gets real shaky. I've been crying all week. I'm sorry, you guys, but my mom said, um, Roxanne, he just wasn't the one for you. <laughs> and I was like, you think? You know, it was like, you know, my mom just felt so bad for me. I was just so heartbroken. You guys, I'm not crying because of what happened. I'm just crying because I'm talking about my mom. You guys know how I am. But, you know, so I was just like, couldn't believe it. That whole week, he never called. He never talked to me or anything. Got back to church the next Sunday. Here they come together as a happy couple, you guys, with the baby. I guess they had to christen the baby after that service. I didn't even care to know, okay? But, you know, they came in as a as a couple and then... And pastor made an announcement that they were planning on, you know, getting married, you guys. I was just not even sure if this was a fucking joke. Like, is somebody telling pastor to be extra messy on this one? But, um, I grinned and bared it, you guys. <laughs> oh, I think it's supposed to be grinning and bore it. I sat there every Sunday, and every Sunday they came in that church as a family. It was just sort of like a nail being driven in the coffin just a little bit deeper. <laughs> and the nigga never said nothing to me, nothing. So, finally, after about two months... I had been hearing little whisperings in the choir that he was having problems with his girlfriend and all of that stuff, right? Sure enough, he come calling me. Now, all of a sudden, he's telling me that, um, you know, they're having problems and he's regretting the things that he did and yada, yada, yada. Well, you guys, at that time, I really did still kind of want to work it out with him, but I was so humiliated. Maybe if that shit would have happened, not in public, okay, but if something, you know, we was just working through ourselves, maybe I probably would have reconsidered it. But the fact that 
that shit happened in front of the church, there was absolutely no way that I was going to allow myself to go there. I'm sorry, bruh, but I can't get back with your ass, okay? And sure enough, they ended up breaking up and, you know, then he realized that he lost a good fucking thing. And then what else should happen? But I would meet this guy named, um, let's call him Jonathan. And Jonathan was fine as hell. He was in the Navy. And Jonathan looked just like Will Smith, okay? So then me and Jonathan started dating and then it was my turn to, you know, floss Jonathan in front of him at church and bring him with me on Sundays and let him see exactly what he lost and, you know, how cute a couple that me and Jonathan were. <laughs> so... <laughs> But you guys, I tell you, I just wanted to tell that story, especially for my younger viewers, because I forgot all about all of this happening. And me and my girlfriend, Debbie, was talking about different things that have happened, you know, laughing about different things that have happened to us over the years. And uh, I was like, you know what? I could tell this story to the young girls out there, okay? Because I get my Roxicology letters and people be so upset about losing somebody and, you know, their world is coming to an end. But I'm going to tell you, it's it gets greater later, you guys. And the one that you really, really think is the one, even though I don't think I felt like Marcus was the one, but he really was truly my first for real, for real boyfriend where I was like really doing things with him and going out and having a good time and sharing church and him being at my parents' house. And, you know, so it was a, it was a very important lesson. Of course, me and Jonathan didn't end up staying together either. And of course, I had dated more and more people, but when I did finally have sex when I was 22 years old, the person that I did have sex with, I was in love with. And I don't regret it at all. So I think I just did this little story time for the pe for the young girls out there to, you know, you can still hold on to whatever is important to you, whatever your conviction is, whatever your faith is. And if you don't want to have sex right now, don't ever allow anybody to pressure you out of it because that's something that you can never get back. Once it's gone, it's gone. So, uh, but yeah, you guys, that was definitely the, the one time that I got dumped in front of the entire church. Did you guys like it? <laughs> <laughs> all right you guys so that's it i'm gonna take my ass back in this office because i mean it ain't shit else to do i didn't even even take my entire lunch but uh yeah you guys story time is always fun just to reminisce on some shit that went on but uh so i hope you guys liked it because people been asking for story time and i was like i don't really have stories like whenever i think i have a story i'll tell it but I don't just have a whole, I mean, I have little, small, little anecdotal things, but you know, anyway, you guys, that's it. Fixing to get on up off of here, get on back to work. You guys, make sure that you rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm It's Rocks. The channel is for It's Rocks, and everything else I do will be in the bottom bar, all right? So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day, and I plan on doing the same. Until next time, rock stars. Bye.